I want to start with a confession. Can I, can I have a confession real quick? Yes? Okay, okay. Do you promise you, you will not say anything? I, I was brought up in church, and uh, bas- basically, uh, I've, I've been in church like since I was a baby. Uh, and I kind of, you know, growing up, I, I learned the, I don't know, the right things to say in church. You know, you know, you know what to say, you know the right words, you know, the right behavior. And I even, even when I prayed, I, yeah, I would just basically repeat what other people would say, and uh, I, which to me was pretty cool, honestly. I mean, it was, I would just basically, I, I wanted to imitate what other people were saying in the church. But if I'm honest with you, I, I, for so many years, I didn't understand what I was praying. I was just practicing this, uh, I don't know, this religion or this. I, I was maybe more focused on um, doing the, the religious thing to do or to say. Because uh, at the end of the day, I just wanted to, you know, be like other people. But here's the confession. In the darkest In the most difficult times of my life, when it hurts, when it's been painful, when I don't know what to say, when when really, when everything around me is out of control, and when I'm when when I've been in the midst of you know struggling with depression or anxiety or with so many things, I can, if I'm honest with you, that those have been the most intimate, those the most intimate moments that I spend with the Lord, and I don't know about you. But there's a lot that we need to learn about prayer. Because I, I don't know, maybe you were brought up in church and you know, like, you know, you pray for the meal, right? And sometimes, if I'm honest, like, uh, if I'm, I want to pray for something else or I, I want to pray for a, a need. And I start praying automatically for the meal, for the food. And that's, that's embarrassing. But that kind of, that's the... That's what happens when you're just basically, uh, you're used to basically go through the motions and, and you're trying to say the right things. But that's why this series is so important because I want to, I'm challenging each one of you to discover, to really learn to depend on God, especially during difficult times. You know, and, and it's, it's amazing that the Lord Jesus Christ, he knew that the kind of struggles that we were going to face in life. And that's why he said, when you pray, these are the things that you need to pray. And he never intended for this to be just a, a religious prayer or something that you just recite, something that you say without any meaning. And it started, if you remember, he said, you start by remembering that God is the Father. And that's why you, you say our, hev- our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. In other words, glory to your name through my deeds, through my words, through my life. I want to worship you. We, just, we, just, uh, we were just saying, and I surrender. So that is the hint for you when you say, I surrender. That's another word for I worship you. I, I'm honoring your name I'm exalting your name and, and that's what we call the prayer of connection our father in heaven and when we talked about the kind of father God is but here's the thing I know some of us still are struggling struggling with the fact like well maybe growing up my father wasn't wasn't the best or maybe he wasn't he was never around and and now you're asking me to pray to God as as the father and as we learn, uh, our, really, our real problem is not with God. It's, it's, it might be with our earthly father. And, and we learn that God is it's a competent, he's a caring, and he's a compassionate and consistent father. And now last week, we look at the second phrase, and, and this is what we read. Jesus said, your kingdom, when we pray, we need to say this, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that, that's what we call the prayer of surrender. Let's be honest, we don't like, so many times in life, we don't like to surrender. But have you been there? That you don't know what to say, you don't know what to do, like uh, everything again is out of control, and the only, the only option for you as a follower of Christ is to surrender. And we looked at three 
uh, three ways that surrender was the solution to stress and when things are uncontrollable in your life and when people, you know, you're dealing with tough people at work or maybe you're experiencing the unexplicable pain. You don't understand what's happening, unexplainable pain. That's when you have to pray the prayer of surrender and that, my friend, will lower your stress. And I think we need that today, right? We need to find ways to lower our anxiety, our stress, our worry. But now today, we're going to look at the prayer of dependence, and which is the third phrase in the Lord's Prayer. And it's interesting that it's only six words. And this is what Jesus said in verse 11, give us today our daily bread. Please say it with me. Give us today our daily bread. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, not in the future. Give us today our daily bread. And now, bread obviously is the universal st staple food. You can find bread anywhere in the world. Of course, of course I'm not an expert. You can go to YouTube. You can find ways to make bread. But obviously, Jesus, would, when he says that we are to pray, give us today our daily bread, he's talking about far more than just bread. In fact, this is something really interesting. In the Bible, in, in the Bible, in Scripture, the Bible tells us that bread represents four things. First of all, it represents the necessities of life. That's what it represents. You need water to live. You need air to live. You need sunshine to live. You need nourishment to live. You need is the necessities for your physical body. But, but there's more than that. There's also a spiritual implication. Not only means that represent the necessities of life, but also bread represents God's word. And the Bible is, is what is called spiritual bread and is spiritual food. And bread is a symbol of, for scripture. But also there's a third thing. Bread also represents... God's family and fellowship, which, by the way, when we are together, sometimes we don't need to say much, but when we are together, I don't know about you, but it makes me feel good. When I see Miguel and, and you know, I give him a hug, and, well, by the way, that, that's Miguel right there. And, and we talk about, you know, life, about issues in life, it makes me feel good because it represents God's family and fellowship. And you just don't have spiritual needs and physical needs, but you also have relational needs. And, and you need people in your life. Do you hear me? You need people in your life. Which, by the way, I don't know how many times I've said this over and over again, but life is better together. But, Pastor, I, I don't know. You know, sometimes I want to be by myself. I get it. You want to play solo, but you belong in the church. There's time for me, which, by the way, I enjoy being by myself, hiking, exercising, doing my 100 push-ups every day. I, I enjoy that. You don't believe me, do you? You see? You see? I want to show you. You want me to show you? Okay, I'll show you. Okay. But bread is a metaphor for the church, for God's family. And there's a fourth thing. It, re it represents also bread represents salvation. And it's the salvation that we find in, through faith in Jesus Christ. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's my point. Whatever your need is, physical, emotional, relational, or spiritual, whether it is a need in your body or it's a need in your mind or your soul or your spirit, God says, I will take care of that need. That's what God says. Whatever it is, whatever you're going through right now, I will take care of that. That's why Jesus said, Give us today our daily bread and all that you need physically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, and every other way. God says, I will provide for your needs. But today we're going to look at how to depend on God to meet all your needs. And it's very important. This is a very important message, particularly because we all know as a nation, and I would say in the world, we are going through very difficult times. We've been dealing with this pandemic for more than two years, and I know people are still struggling with this, and, and we are not out of the, wood, the woods yet. 
But I guess the question for me, and this is, this is what I'm more interested in, is how do I, how do I let God meet my needs when that, that he wants to meet? How do you let go, God meet your needs? And, and you have to depend on him. And that's what the Bible says, that everything that does not come from faith, it's a sin. So we live by faith. And also the Bible says that according to your faith, it will be done to you. And I believe, honestly, that should change the way we pray. Because Jesus said that. It's according to your faith. And I want to challenge you. When you pray, I mean, are you really stretching your faith? Or are you the kind of person that would say, well, I'm praying, but I, I, know, I know that he's not going to answer to my prayer, you know, so I pray. And also, the Bible says that without faith, maybe you know this, it is impossible to please God. So... The way you connect to God, and, the, and that's what this series is all about, is through faith. And how do you connect to God so that your physical and your emotional and your spiritual and your relational and your financial needs are met? So what does it mean for you to depend on God? So what does it mean? It means a couple of things. Number one, depending on God every day means that you see God Seeing God as your only source. Did you hear me? You see God, depending on God, means seeing God as your source. The source of what, Pastor? Well, literally, the source of everything. He is the source of everything. Everything you see in the world and everything you cannot see in the world and in the universe, guess what? God made He's the source of everything, air, light, water, atoms, everything you got belongs to the Lord. God is the source, has come from God as the source, and he's the source of every good thing in the universe. And there's four things that you need to remember really quick. The first one, everything is a gift from God. So even if you go to work tomorrow and you start making money, guess what? Everything you have comes from God. It's a gift from God. Nothing you have, have you earned. You don't earn air. You don't earn water. You don't earn life itself. You don't earn the sunlight that keeps you alive. You don't earn any of that. It is a flat out gift and it's everything by God's grace. Here's a reason for you. To praise God every day. To say, God, today I remember that everything I have is a gift. That's why the book of James, he reminds us of this. And he says, every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from who? From the Father of the heavenly light who does not change like shifting shadows. I like that because God is not like me. I change. My emotions are changing every day. What about you? Am I the only one crazy here? I change all the time. Sometimes I, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped up, excited. Sometimes I'm down. You know, I'm struggling with that. And I'm hoping that you can identify with that. But here's the good news. My God never changes. He never changes. He's, he's constant. He, he's always God. And he doesn't change like shift in shadow. That's why the Lord's prayer the third, the, in, in this third phrase starts with the word give. Give us. Give us today our daily bread. Why? Because it's a gift. You cannot earn it. Listen, look at me. Stop trying to earn God's approval. There's nothing you can do that will earn God's approval. He loves you no matter what. It's all a gift. But also number two. There's nothing you need that God cannot provide. There's nothing you need that God cannot provide. There's nothing that he cannot supply. He's the supplier of everything. And that's the kind of God that we worship. I don't know what you're going, what you're going to need all the rest of this year. And by the way, neither do you. You you don't know the kind of needs that you're going to have. But I do know this. Whatever you need, our God can supply. And that's what Paul, he wrote to the Philippians and he said these words, my God, 
and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. I want you to circle that phrase, the riches of his glory, which means as lavish as only God can lavish, God has unlimited resources. Now, this is when you can say, my daddy, my daddy has all the resources. That's my daddy. That's the kind of word to God that we worship. And what this means is that there's nothing you need that God cannot provide. It means that as a child of God, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you should never have a scarcity mentality. I'm not promoting that, you know, what people have called the prosperity gospel, you know, that we're kind of bargaining with God. No, I don't, I'm not preaching that. But what I'm saying is that we need to change that mentality. Like, you know what? No, I'm afraid, you know, there's, there, is, there isn't going to be enough. You know, that there's no way that I, could, I can do this. Or there's not enough to go around, and so I'm going to panic, and I'm going to worry, and I'm going to, I'm going to get anxious. I'm going to be afraid. There's plenty in the world for everybody. Are you listening? There's plenty. There's enough for all the need in the world. There's not enough for all the greed in the world. There's no room for greed in the world. The reason why some don't have enough is not because it isn't available. I feel like preaching this morning. It's because it is not shared. It is because we still have the mentality that, you know what, they, they, they don't need my resources. They don't, the church don't need my money, so I will not stop giving. Change that. You need to change that. Some people have a whole lot and some people have nothing. That That's a matter of being able to be generous. That's why this is not even the, the, what I'm preaching on this morning, but it, we have to learn to be generous, church. It just needs to be shared. So the Bible says that it's all a gift from God and there's nothing that you need that God cannot supply. But also number three, God wants to give it to you. To you. I'm preaching Spanish now. He wants to give it to you. And you need to know that you need to, you need to know this for sure. That no matter what you need in your life. God wants to give it to you. That's why Jesus, he, he taught this to his disciples. And, and he said these words in Matthew, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will, will give him a stone? I mean, of course, we know the answer, right? I wouldn't do that. I know the next part is a little tricky because some cultures do, do need, I mean, do eat snakes. Maybe you eat snakes. Well, we live in Texas, why? Right? I mean, we we. I don't know. Okay, let's, go, let's move on. But if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. Some of you say, well, I, I would. You know, I live in the country, you know, whatever. If you, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, please circle that, how much more will your Father in heaven give Good gift to those who ask him. If your kids come to you and say, Daddy, Mommy, I'm hungry. What would you do? Oh, just be quiet. Stop. Stop wanting. I'm, no, I'm so busy. You would give me something to eat, right? Only two of you say yes. Come on. Whoa. Would you give him a piece of rubber just to, to chew on for a little bit? No, you wouldn't. You're going to give him some food. If, if you are genuinely hungry, you're going to help him out. You're going to do whatever it takes because you are a father, you are a mom. And if you do know how to do this and you are imperfect, well, certainly God who is perfect, he knows exactly, my friend, what you need today. So don't you dare to think, well, you know, God doesn't care. Well, he does care about you. Even the, the little things. But there's a fourth thing. He's waiting on you to ask. This is what I've, I've been a pastor for so many years, and I'm not getting any younger, but this is what I've discovered. Sometimes, well, God wants to bless you, but we never ask for that. We never ask for that. So if you, if you have needs in your life, 
that are not being met, it is not God's fault. You are not waiting on God. In fact, he is actually waiting on you. And this is what James wrote. He says, you do not have, please read this with me. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives. That you may spend what you get on your pleasures. I cannot tell you how many times people have come to me and say, well, Pastor, I swear to God, I swear to God that if I win the lottery, I will, you know, I will, you know, when I become millionaire, millionaire I will start giving to the church. I will say, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that in the church, right? Be quiet. I think you get it wrong. You need to start giving to the church now. And then the Lord will decide, not through lottery, but through doing the right thing. Is that clear? Are we good? And, and then it, the Bible says, also Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. This is what we call ask, A-S-K, ask. Ask, seek, and knock. It's like, I want to start rapping. Ask, seek, and knock. <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> Pastor, promise me that you will never do that again. Please. So what God is saying is this. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Ask that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And over and over again, we are told to ask, and God says, I want you to look to me as the source for all your needs in your life. And I know some have asked me, well, Pastor, but does that really, does God really mean that we can ask for anything in Jesus' name? Well, here's the thing. When you are close to God and when you have commun communion with him every day, guess what? Even the way you ask is going to start changing. Because now what you used to value before, Maybe you were looking for your own pleasure. Now you start praying, you know, God, just give me what I need because I want to start blessing people around me. <clears throat> so he said, my very blunt question, who is your source? Who is your source for your safety? Who is your source for your, all your needs in life? That is the way God says, I decided. Who is the source for your Financial stability, Washington, the government, Wall Street, your investments, I hope not, your job. You're looking for, uh, to your job to be the source of your security, friend, I hate to tell you, but you could lose your job tomorrow. But your job is not your source of peace. And stability, God is your source. So who are you looking to uh, to meet your needs? No man will ever be able to meet all your needs. Girls, if you're looking for your, uh, what do you call that? Your uh, charming, what? Prince charming. Prince charming. To provide the happiness and the security you need. Uh-uh, you're, lo you're looking in the wrong place. God is the source of your happiness. God is the source of your provision. For, some of, for those of you who are married, you know that you get married and you find out that you've got bigger needs in life that only God can provide. Your parents cannot meet all your needs. Your spouse cannot meet all your needs. Your girlfriend or your boyfriend cannot meet all your needs. In fact, you are setting yourself up for a profound disappointment. Only God can meet all your needs. And this is, he is all you need today. To survive today. And you need to look to him as the source of your supply. You don't look to your IRA or to your individual retirement account. You don't look at, you don't look at your 401k. 
you certainly don't look uh, to your social security for security. We, I think we know that. You look to God for your security. And here's the thing, this is what I found. If God, if one door closes, God can open another one. Yes. I've seen it in my life. Have you? If the faucet turns off here, God can turn off a faucet here or there. There's a second <coughs> key to depending on God. Number two. Depending on God every day means that you share whatever he supplies. You share whatever he supplies. Trusting God, depending on God means sharing whatever he supplies. When God gives you something, he always wants you to share it with other people. Everything God gives to you, he wants you to share. And notice, he doesn't say, give me today my daily bread. It says, give us today. Did you see that? It says, give us today our daily bread. We are to share it. So, so why does God want you to share, it? He, to share this? He wants you to share. He wants you to learn to be like him. God shares everything he's got with you because God is a generous God. He's so generous. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world, help me, that he gave. That he gave his one and only son. You can you can give without loving. We know this, but you cannot love without giving. And God says, I want you to become like me. I want you to be loving. And I want you to learn how to share with others. And the only reason, my friend, you're able to love anybody is because God. It's because God is love. And love is all about giving. In fact, how do you spell love? You spell it give. G I V E. That's how you spell love. And when you say to some to somebody, I need you, I want you, I got to have you. That's what most of the the, the songs nowadays, that's what they say. I'm sorry, that is not love, that is lust. Love is, what can I do for you? How can I meet your needs? What can I give, what can I give to you? But lust is all about, I need you, I want you, I've got to have you. I cannot exist without you. It's about me, but God says, this is what God says, I want you to learn to love and to, and to love is all about sharing. That's why we pray, give us today. Give us today our daily bread and the question for you is this how much will you depend on, upon God the number one way God tests your faith do you know what it is I know we hate to talk about this but it's money it's money it's finances the number is the number one way God is testing you question are you going to worry or are you going to trust God? Are you going to worry about your finances? Or are you going to trust God? Are you going to be stingy? Or are you going to learn to share with others? Are you going to hold on and, and hoard because you're afraid that you're not going to get any more? Or are you going to be open and you're going to, be, you're going to start being generous to, with other people around you? Here's the thing. God is testing you today. That's why the Bible says... Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich, who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. So I know some of you might ask, well, why does he say that? Because money is mad? Is that what you're saying, Pastor? No, that's not what I'm saying. Some of the greatest saints or people of God in history were quite wealthy. So why does he say that? Because the more money you have, the less you tend to depend on God. Can I get an amen? Because you tend to depend on, on your bank account, on your checking account. Oh, we don't have enough. We don't have enough. You know, this is how much we have. And, and that's why the Bible says that the, that the poor, I'm not saying that. God says that the poor, God has chosen to be rich in faith. Why? 
because you don't know God is all you need until you realize that he's all you got. I'm going to say it again. You don't know that God is all you need until you realize that God is all you got. And the greatest people of faith that I have met in my life, none of them are in this country or in this part of the world. None of them because when you don't have anything, when you don't have a house, when you don't have clothes, when you don't have food, you are dependent on God and on him alone. That's why Jesus prayed, give us today our daily bread. And I know we're not at that level of dependence, but yet God says, I want you to trust me. He says, I want you to trust me, and I'm testing you to see how much you will depend on me. I'm testing to see whether you will share what I supply to you. And now what I'm, what I'm about to share with you, you will do this during the year, during this year of recession or economical financial crisis. And you will shine out like a star on a dark night. And you will, you will remember really quick three truths. First of all, what God gives you, he wants to give through you. What God gives to you, he wants to give through you. And, and this is a very important principle. God is looking for people that he can bless the world with. He, he looks around and says, will you be a cup or will you be a straw? So here's the difference. If you're a cup, it's just, okay, give us today our daily bread, and, and you just fill up my cup, and that's it. I'm going to keep it all. Now, but if you'll say, God, I will be a straw, and, and you can channel through me to all the people, blessing, physical materials, special blessing, God says, that's the kind of person that I want to bless. One of the things that I've learned over the years as a follower of Jesus is that the more that you give in your life, the more that you give in your life, whatever you give in your life, the more God blesses you. Just try it. Just learn to be generous. That's why the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then, and then bread to eat. In the same way, Paul writes, he will provide and increase your resources. And then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Are you reading this with me? The whole promise is built on, are you willing to share what he supplies to you? And then it says, yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts, Paul says, to those who need them, they will thank God. Now you say, wait a minute. I'm Pastor Udom. I'm not rich enough to be generous. Oh, yes, you are. No matter how much you got, you can be generous. That's the bottom line. And, and there's a story about a woman in the Bible who she only had two pennies and yet she gave them away. And you can always give something. You can always give something. And it's a myth that, you know, I don't have enough to give. Stop that. Stop saying that. You can always give something and God is testing you. That's why this passage that I just read says, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. Well, even in a financial crisis, yes. And when you take your gift to those who need them, in other words, when you are generous with that, God has given you, they will thank God. In other words, this will produce an outpouring of gratitude to God. And, and God says, when you are going through a tough time and you say, God, I don't have much, but whatever it I got, I'm willing to share with others. I've got a little food here, but I'm willing to invite someone over for dinner, God. Can you use this? I'm willing to share what I've got. And God says, I will do three things. One, you will grow spiritually. Two, other people's needs are getting met. 
or are, are met. Number three, God gets praise. Some people are looking for a legitimate example of living an authentic Christian life. And that's how people respond. But also number two, when you meet other needs, others' needs, God promises that he will take care of yours. This is a test. When you meet other, others' needs, even though you don't have much at all, you just got a little, but when you work and help at helping others, God says, that's the kind of person I want to bless. And he takes, takes care of your needs. Now, let me show you an amazing verse. I don't, I don't have too much time, but I, I just want to read it because this is so powerful. The prophet Isaiah, Isaiah he, he wrote this words and he said, share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives, from your tios and tias and abuelos who need help. Then he says, then your salvation will come like a dawn. That's amazing. I get God's favor in my life. And number two, also we see that he says, and your wounds will be quickly healed. This is what I've discovered. Even in the darkest moments, maybe you're struggling with whatever you're struggling in life, that is the time for you to start making a difference in the lives of other people. Because the Bible says then your wounds, your hurts will quickly heal. And I'm talking about your emotional wounds, your relational wounds, your financial wounds. He says your wounds will quickly heal because you're, you help somebody else. And people have come to me, but Pastor, I don't feel like doing that. I, don't, I feel whatever, you know, I feel down. But that is the time to start making a difference. And then this passage says, your godliness will lead will lead you forward. That, that's amazing. That is a good thing. Number four, also and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. That is a good, that's good to know, especially in a financial crisis. But number five, then when you call, the Lord will answer. These are five promises, my friend. Five promises in the middle of a recession or in the middle of crisis. When you meet other people's needs, God will take care of yours. And he promises that. There's a third, print, third principle, and I conclude. Whatever you give to God, whatever you give to God, he multiplies. If you give God your talent, he will multiply your talent. If you give God your energy, he will multiply your energy. If you give, give God your time and, and you start your day with a daily quiet time with him, he will multiply your time. If you give God your money, he will multiply your money. And there's a passage in the Bible, huh? Ecclesiastes 11, 1 says, Cast your bread upon the waters and you will find it after many days. So, okay, so what is that? I've read that before, but what does that mean? Cast all your bread upon the waters. It's an old expression, but this is what it means. Whatever you give to God, He will multiply. That's what it means. Whatever you give to God, He will multiply and He will give it back to you. That's what the book of Proverbs says. Give freely and become more wealthy. It is possible to be generous and become more wealthy. That's what the Bible says. Be stingy and lose everything. Friends, as we're getting ready to go through this recession or this financial crisis, we are going to need to help each other. And we need to remember that we are all in this together. Father, I want to thank you for your word. And Father, as we conclude, Father, I want, to, I, want us to, I want to pray that you will help us remember how to pray. That when we pray, Lord, give us today our daily bread, that we need to learn that you are the source of everything. 
but also, Father, whatever you give to us, Father, you want us to be your instruments to help, to serve, to minister to other people. So, Father, we pray in the name that is above all names, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, everyone. We're so glad you invited us into your living room today. We hope to see you in person next time. To stay up to date on all that's going on at our church throughout this week, please visit GetSemony.org. We'll see you next time.